Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update number two today from Japan. And I had a lot to say. And this is really um, not only addressing this particular article, but I think we're going to see a lot of articles that follow that cite Chris Larson talking about the XRP price not being uh, tied to on demand liquidity. Well, yes, of course, not yet. There has only been. $2 billion. It's a tiny fraction of the market that has gone over on demand liquidity. And this is why we pay attention to not only just the new corridors that are lighting up with ODL, but all of the use case that uh, XRP is going to demonstrate. And we're going to talk about a brand new communication that's coming from Flare Networks in regards to its utility of the XRP ledger and how that can also be something that is going to add to the utility of the digital asset XRP. So when Chris talks about how XRP is basically correlated to the same factors that Bitcoin and Ethereum are, I agree. Um, when you only have about a hundred billion in trading per year, that's why ODL yet has not had an impact. So all those things that drive Bitcoin and Ethereum, like being uh, the store of value or whether it's just hodlers, people hanging on to the, to the token, or if it's speculation or any type of um, arbitrage trading or, you know, what have you, swing trading. This is just a tiny, tiny market still. And ODL is just one of the many use cases. So when we go to actually listening to that portion where he is citing that fact, which I agree with 100%, you can see that it is because of the amount that has been traded so far on ODL is so small. We're going to just listen to this portion. It's very quick, like about a minute. Well, Ripple, well, XRP is decentralized, as you say. Does that preclude Ripple from acting as an advisor or a consultant to the central banks, given its expertise? Or if you do that, do you risk sort of being you know, seen as XRP's overlord? No, I don't think so at all. You know, again, keep in mind, most of what, if you look at the XRP ledger, XRP, the, the decentralized digital currency, most of what happens in that ecosystem is really correlated with Bitcoin and Ethereum. You know, it's like 100 billion uh, trading per year, uh, let's say. The vast, vast majority is connected with what's happening in the overall market and is probably is being driven by kind of all the things that drive Bitcoin and Ethereum. Is it store of value? Uh, is it maybe uh, just kind of holding it uh, as you know something that we valuable in a digitized, mobilized future? Is it speculation? You know, that's just kind of all happening in its own, you know, kind of economic reality, completely separate from what uh, Ripple is focused on. You know? Yep, it's the economic reality. I totally agree with him. And so when we look at all of the utility that XRP brings, this is uh, one of the reasons why we're paying a lot of attention to the Flare Networks. And we have a new communication from them just moments ago, and it kind of, makes me laugh when it says it's just a five minute read. <laughs> Actually, for me, it was more than five minutes. There's a lot of new verbiage in here and I needed to, uh, yeah, take my time to go through it carefully because, you know, I, there's a lot of new terms. I see, which is issued currency and trustless. Well, I know that you don't have to trust anyone, but I want to be uh, sure I understood what an a trust line was on the ledger and the difference between a master key pair and a regular key pair and what exactly is rippling ah that's that atomic settlement that net settlement in a trustless way so you're going to also learn what a black hole is that an address that is not derived from a known secret key. So there was a for me it wasn't a 5 minute read but it's a brief summary aiming to put forward a high level concept for using Flare to trustlessly issue highly fungible assets on the XRP ledger. And in doing so, 
the Flare Network would not just be providing utility for the digital asset XRP, but also would be providing utility directly to the XRP ledger. So I think you're going to find that you'll learn about the issuance process uh, in the issuance fa failure, should that uh, be also part of the um, structure, the redemption, and also important notes and benefits. One key benefit that stands out for me among many is this atomic net settlement, the rippling that can occur between a much larger set of parties for much larger amounts. Yeah, I want to thank Hugo and the entire Flare team for bringing this technology to life. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. And then, you know, just quickly, I want to, I someone pointed out a video uh, that, um, gosh, somebody disagreed with my um, findings on, on the Stellar Network. And yeah, it's okay. I, I was very, very upfront that I am, I am definitely a supporter of XLM. I just couldn't find anything current where Lumens was being used. And I, um, yeah, I invite still anybody to point me because somebody did do a um, video and there was a lot of old videos of Jed and a lot of old communication from when IBM was doing a proof of concept for the world wire with Jesse Lund, which Jesse is now gone. And, and I can tell you that um, when you look at the foundation that was formed in late last year and they set forth their new strategy and their new goals, and even the, video that I played for you with Lisa Nestor, which is their senior strategist just a few days ago, she recorded. Um, they have a really a very laser focus on providing rails that financial institutions and banks can issue their own stable coin. And a perfect example here is given in this Nigerian fiat backed stablecoin, the NGNT. This is from March 2020. And it's where um, all banks who are on the NIBS network in Nigeria uh, can do these payments for the banking network. And the cross-border uh, token, the NGNT, is used for cross-border. And it's not... Um, yeah, it's... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for it. So I am not an XRP maxi, and no, I don't get compensated from Ripple. And I uh, would love to see something current. And I'm when I mean something current, I mean something in the last three months, uh, or for sure after the new strategy was set forth by the foundation late last year. And um, I, I'd love to see where. Lumens is shown being used. Now you can you can go in and and exchange on many different digital assets in their ecosystem, and Lumens is one of them. But I, I guess where I'm what I'm looking for is where we can really see some real proof that the Lumens is being used as the asset or as the bridge currency, and and not. Uh, where it's a stable coin that's backed by another fiat, which is which is really what their focus has turned towards. So, yeah, I just want to make it clear: I am not one to um, approve or disapprove of any project out there. Zero, all the time. I'm just looking for the facts. So, uh, you don't have to to tell me that I am trying to make this project look bad. Not at all. Not at all. So I just think that clarification was super important to give. And I'm giving a shout out to um, Aiden here. Aiden has been away for a while. You know, he was at 
the time when he first started, one of the youngest XRP community members. And um, I see he's starting to grow up. And he gave me a direct mail to let me know that he has um, started making videos again. So I just think uh, I want to say hello, Aiden, and good luck to you. And, and do the best you can with bringing good quality content to the space and that's great i'm i'm happy to see i'm happy to see that you're growing up and and it's uh fun too for me fun to hear you uh do your videos again okay everybody we're jumping to some fluff oh well this is a transitional fluff <laughs> because uh the poor new prime minister here he's getting He's getting in so much trouble for writing his tweets in English that there are, oh gosh, the word is kibishi, which is strict. There are so many people that are strict for his English, but I think they should be a little more relaxed. So he tried to tweet out a little note to President Trump that he was concerned and wished the very best for the first lady and him and their recovery. And um, because of the English that he used, uh, he just got attacked and people were rewriting his tweet in, you should have said it this way and you should have said it this way. I guess I don't, I guess I have less, less, uh, kibishiness. <laughs> I think that the fact that he's that he's given it a try in English is 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 fantastic. And so we we shouldn't be so strict. And I know that some uh of the Japanese are maybe embarrassed that his quality of English is or his level is low. I, I, I guess I just don't see it that way. But anyways, it's caused a stir. So now he has someone who is going to do his tweets for him, which is, I think it's kind of a shame. It pulls off the, um, the, the sincerity to his words, because I think it should come from him no matter if the grammar is bad or you know, i just oh gosh i think people are just too worried about the details of certain things and then here is something there's a product that i found today that i'm always thinking about everyone who's coming to japan who's going to visit here and and one of the things that maybe some people are worried about is if they have to sit on the floor. Well, this is Billy. She is, she is well known here in Japan. She, um, I'm not sure what her original country is. I'm just not sure, but she is, uh, one of the, um, uh, one of the people who have really done a great job at, at, living in this country. And I want to play just a portion of this where she talks about how to sit on the floor. And I think she does it in a great way. And it's a perfect segue to the product that I found that I think you're going to be very interested in. So I, I agree with how she um, takes on this fear that maybe some people have about coming to Japan. It's her YouTube channel. Hi and welcome Japan Objects. My name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a professional kimono teacher living in Komodo, Japan. I hear from a lot of people coming to Japan that they are worried about sitting on the floor, what is the proper etiquette and whether they'll be able to do it. And yes, kneeling on the floor for a long time can be quite painful, but you don't have to worry. There are, of course, more comfortable ways to sit on the floor. So today I want to show you three ways to sit on the floor. The first one will be the most polite one called a seisa. The second one will be a more comfortable one, but is still very polite. And the last one is going to be zazen, or better said, sitting in meditation. So let's get started. The first thing you should know about seisa is that you don't have to worry um, I think no one will expect you to sit in seiza because even most Japanese find it very difficult and painful. Another thing is that you probably won't sit directly on the floor. You will sit on a cushion, 
like this, that is called a sabuton. Having that said, let me show you how to do a seiza. Approach the zabuton in a 45 degree angle. Kneel down but don't sit down. And rearrange your knees to the front edge of the zabuton. Sit down but letting your bottom rest on your heels. So that's perfect seiza style. And I think, um, I don't want to show you the other ones. I just want to show you that I can't even sit seiza anymore. I used to 20 years ago, but I have since now no way I can't get up and it hurts. So this is the way on the lower left is the way I would sit when I uh, am in a situation where I have to sit on the floor. So this is the proper way for women and this is the proper way for men who don't sit seiza. If you sit seiza, the women's knees are together and the man's knees can be slightly apart. But I found this is the project or the the product that prompted this particular fluff. And it was something I found that I thought, wow, everybody coming to Japan should put one in their suitcase. Look at this. It folds up so flat, but pops out like a bicycle seat. How convenient is that? And then you can sit on that. See this guy here? And you can kind of fake your Seiza sitting. Here's the back version. And the company makes a whole series of different sizes. And I just thought that this was so inventive. And I found their website. And you can see the three sizes also in a slightly different shape and design. And watch this, how it just folds out like one, two, three. This is really, really great design. One, two, three, done. Wow, I love these kinds of projects. Very, very, very. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I feel like I need one of these. <laughs> All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye bye.